Good afternoon. I'm Joshua Finn with JNH Aerospace. Today we are going to do something on video that I don't believe has ever been recorded on video before. We're going to trim catapult launched gliders. Hand launched gliders, same thing. Chuck gliders, whatever you know them by. We're going to do it. So we're going to start out by showing you how they're supposed to fly and then we're going to take a bare bones simple balsa glider. We're going to trim it. And then we're going to try something I have not done before. We have a Dollar Tree foam board glider and we're going to try to make it go. That will be interesting. I think this one will probably be capable of about 45 seconds. We will not get that today because it's windy. This thing, if I do 15 seconds, I'm considering it a victory. So let's get started. You're going for it. So you don't want to just get something that's going to go up there and loop around. We want actual altitude. We want to hang on to it and we want to glide. That is an extremely difficult task because you're going very fast and you have to be trimmed to be stable in a certain way going fast. And then you have to be trimmed to be stable in another way going slowly. And we have to have enough intermediate stability in, inside to get us from that steep launch into a steady glide. So that's a very difficult thing to understand uh, for most people. I'm not going to explain how it works. We're just going to show you how to do it. And that, that should keep it simple for most people. We can look at uh, explaining why in a, in a later video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you Kurt Stevens' method for testing a glider. So what we want to see is we want to see this behavior. And if you get this behavior, once you do a full-on launch up at this angle, you'll get a proper transition. may need a few tweaks, but it'll be about right. So what you want to do is you want to hook this thing up and you want to point at the ground. You notice I'm inclined downward. I'm going to pull back a little ways, and you see the aircraft pulls off to the left and snaps straight into a glide. And this is a good one. It keeps going. Come here, little girl. Nope. Going to go bye-bye. Fair enough. So the thing you notice is that aircraft launches away, it pitches up, and pulls to the left. So it, it's going to pull uh, yaw to the left, and it's going to roll to the left. And those motions are balanced so that the aircraft pitches up, loses airspeed, and then just slides, yaws to, to level. The wings snap to level and continues on. The way we get that, the way we get that is we have a little bit of left rudder. We have just enough incidence between the wing and the tail to give you that very slight pitch up. And then we have opposite aileron in the form of a little wedge right here. And this is what causes the aircraft when it pitches up, to slide over and then come back to wings level. So, this aircraft, I did a basic CG on it. I don't have the wedge on here. I have not adjusted the stab. And um, on my, my rudder, I have a, just a tiny, tiny hair of, uh, tiny hair of left rudder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by tossing it. We are not going to bend the surfaces. You do not ever want to do that because if you do that, they will become floppy and those settings will not stay. So anytime you have a humidity change or something bumps against the aircraft, bad things start to happen. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off a little strip of wood. Wow, that was... Okay, so we're going to glue this on the right side, and that is because this will give us a slight right roll offset to address the left rudder. If you're left-handed, you want to reverse all of this. Alright, hopefully that'll stay, and we'll try once more. And, oh, we see it looks pretty good there. Now. I've got a nice hook underneath here. I'm going to hook one loop with my rubber band on it. Notice I'm using a forward grip on this aircraft. We'll see some variations on that in a minute. And that actually is about right, what you see right there. Okay, so what we saw was that the aircraft pitched up fairly strongly, pulled off to the left, and leveled its wings. It was a little slow to level the wings though, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the standard hand-launch glider trim. 
which is where I glue one of those little strips of wood over here on that wing. Normally you would actually use a little bit of a wedge. We're just gonna go simple here. All right, same setup again. We're gonna hook up one loop of rubber, we're gonna fire more or less down, and that was overkill. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue another small strip. Got the wrong thing, here we go. Another small strip to the rudder on the left side. That's gonna give us a left rudder trim. So we'll do it just like that. And hopefully, this will give us real nice Okay, so the aircraft took it over too far to the left, so we are going to cut this uh, left rudder tab in half. And um, I think we're also going to end up reducing the up elevator because I, I noticed there was some uh, pitch uh, coupling that was going on there as well. So, off we go again. And puts in real nice. Okay, so what we saw there the aircraft hooked over a little bit too far to the left. There we go. Nice job there. Um, and it All right, so I think we're ready to go for broke. So, put the aircraft in, both We, um, we're at a different location because the phone decided to uh, take a vacation and lost a whole bunch of footage. So in the meantime, what I did is I moved this grip from here to here because after we made a few flights, I managed to cut the stab off with my finger and I concluded that this was the solution. So no other changes have been made. And as a result, we're going to see if this has held trim for almost a week. So here it goes. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So we see that the trim has held and all the adjustments we made up to this point have worked. So now we're gonna switch to another airplane. I trimmed this airplane out before and I've had to do undo all of the trimming because we lost all that footage. So we're gonna start fresh and see what happens. I have balanced the, fuse, the I balanced it so the CG's about here. And we've got a little bit of a foam elevator tab we're gonna see what happens. And it's a little stally, so I'm gonna put some nose weight. Now the truth is, you actually don't have to trim this for a perfect glide. You're just looking to see that it's stable. You'll tweak the glide after the launch is fully trimmed. So that's about right there. That's about all you can expect from this weight. So, I assume that this is going to need some left trim. We'll find out here. Or not. Interesting. Pretty hard to the, uh, to the left, so I'm going to give it a pretty sizable tab here. Maybe. There we go.
And with that, we will try again. Maybe. Okay. So again, same procedure as before. And pops into a pretty good glide. But you notice it kind of sank in, so we're going to give it a little bit of up elevator. A little bit of up elevator. We'll see what this does for us. And that looked quite good. You notice it does not glide exceptionally well. It's a thick foam board airplane. It's not a good airfoil. To apply some power, so we'll see what happens here. I'm going to launch downwind and let it curve back into the wind. We don't have much of a breeze here, so it doesn't matter a whole lot. Explored. I think this airplane is actually a little bit nose heavy. I think we put too much clay on it. And I think that's why it's assuming the uh, nose down attitude in the glide. It could be that it's just that inefficient though. So, one way to find out. Alright, here it goes. And I was correct. It does work. We have seen, as we have seen the trimming of this airplane, it flies quite well. I actually have gotten some really long flights with this. That, that one flight you saw, the catapult broke. If, if you didn't notice, this thing will launch really, really high. I'm quite impressed with it. We will be releasing a kit for this. This little guy uh, does fly, so if you must make them from foam board, here you go. Uh, one thing I want to point out is the size of the adjustments we make. This is how much clay I removed to change that glide. So you make very small adjustments with these guys. So what I would like to point out, this airplane does take about 15 minutes to build at most, more like five. This one takes maybe 20. So, I know you guys like foam board. Balsa does fly better. But use what you got, have fun. Uh, one thing I will point out, this is an AMA regulation catapult for competition. And you can use more rubber, but do so at your own risk because the launch velocities get much higher and the amount of tension you're putting on there gets higher. So this is kind of what we consider to be safe in a competitive environment. Any questions you have, please comment below. And thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more. Bye. Hail Canberra, Jeff Catapult Glide. Not at all. Say hi to the pecan trees. Come out of them, please.
Yeah, that didn't sound good.